Okay, scientists, welcome to a little lesson on how to make good scientific models. So when we think about making scientific models, it might be helpful to look at other types of models that you might be familiar with. We often find models in informational texts. Let me show you a few. So I'm sure you've seen things like this in books before where there are images and then some words to describe the image. So these is showing the different parts of a skateboard. Here we can see the movement of butterflies in this butterfly book. And here is a bicycle that has all of its parts labeled. So these are different kinds of models that we find in informational text. When we make a scientific model, it has some similar elements to the models we see in informational texts, but it does have just a little bit more. As my good friend Paul Anderson says, models, scientific models, are ways to show what's happening inside our brain. So when we're thinking about how something works, we create a model to take our ideas, and put it out on paper so we can share it with other people. Let's take a look at the elements of a scientific model that are expected in third grade. So you do see the pictures like what we see in informational text, but there are quite a few other elements that are required to make it a real scientific model. So you, of course, need to draw what you think is happening. You'll add pictures you'll have different colors. You might have a zoom in bubble. That's what these are. And you might show time, meaning this happens before and then this happens after. You also might include questions um, that pertain to what is happening in your scientific model. Your model should also have labels. Okay, now I'm gonna draw a scientific model to explain how plants take in sunlight and water in order to grow, which I believe is something you covered in second grade, so it should be familiar to all of you. Now, I am not a professional scientist, and I am not any kind of artist, so I'm just gonna try my best, and we'll see what I come up with. Okay, here we go, I've got my, uh, markers. You could also use pens or colored pencils. You, you should have something that has color. So I have my this fancy marker set and I have my science notebook. So I will open to a blank page. It makes sense for me to do this sideways. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a title. So I think it would make sense to do kind of a split panel on this to show how it starts as a seedling and then grows into more of a plant. Okay, so when it gets planted, we'll put a little seed, maybe I'll do the seedling. Then I'll show that water needs to go down here. And of course, sunlight. So at this point, you've noticed I've used the time by showing before and after. I'm working on before. I'm also drawing pictures, and I'm making sure that everything is labeled, and there are arrows pointing to all the parts. So the word is pointing to the part of the drawing. So after the plants get the water and sunlight, they have a much more defined root system. Maybe I'll use this darker green. I'm gonna make this into a sunflower, just cause I like sunflowers. I've added this explanation that water is absorbed by the roots. 
sometimes our labels will be a little bit longer than just one word, but sometimes our labels are just one word. One more thing I might want to add to my scientific drawing is a zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in on this uh, when the seed is becoming a seedling. I want to show that even the tiny seed still has roots coming out of it. So this is like tiny roots are beginning to form, but they're not very big and visible. We wouldn't be able to see that on the on this zoomed out version, but because we've done this zoom in, let me add a little. That's a zoomed in picture of what's happening here. Finally, you might want to add a question for further research. So even though I understand that plants need water and sunlight to grow, I might still be thinking what would happen to a plant if it doesn't get sunlight or water or how long would it take for the plant to start growing? Hmm. So here, I'm just making a few things fancy. I really want this to look nice because this is important. This is my thinking and the more clear everything is, the better the people who see it will understand what is happening here. So here I have my scientific model and let's check back on those elements of a scientific model that we're supposed to include. Do I have my explanation? Yes. Do I have pictures? Yes. Colors? Yes, I did use colors. I have a zoom in bubble to show what's happening in that tiny seed. I used time to show what happens before and what happens after. And I've also added a question and I made sure everything was labeled and had arrows so that it was very clear. Now I have to say I am pretty proud of that scientific model that I just created. Even though I might not be the best artist in the world, I still took my time and I went slow and I tried my best. And what, what, what came out of that hard work is pretty cool and I'm pretty proud of it. So as you go off to make your own scientific models, check back to the elements of a scientific model poster and uh, make sure you include all the elements and take your time. You shouldn't rush through this. You really want to be able to show whoever sees this model what's really going on inside your brain. All right. Good luck, scientists. Bye.